Um, no, I um, maybe did a read with Pam doing some theatre a long time ago. Um, no, I don't think so. No, I was a big fan of, see, oh, Ta Ta Tammy McIntosh, did I? No, I knew her outside of the workplace. Um, so, no, we were new kids on the block when we arrived and fangirling over Boomer and Celia, uh, Pat and Celia. So. Um, so we kind of caught up and I knew Kate uh, Jenkinson as well from um, from socially and I remember sitting next to Susie Porter at the um, the opening night of um, Shane Warne the musical in Sydney and going Susie Porter it's, uh, Susie Porter and that was the only other interaction that I've had with Susie but uh, <laughs> you know I was fangirling over her too so uh, and fangirling over a lot of the other cast members, but um, one, I think one thing that I think is, is, a, is a universal constant in the show is that when you arrive, you you get welcomed into the family that is Wentworth with open arms, and it's a it's an open and encouraging you know place to work. And uh, I think everybody that I've spoken to has that same experience with Wentworth. They they um, they get welcomed into the family and um, and and get uh, allowed to to shine at their at their best. Mm. I wanted to ask you about that, Jane, as well, having worked on so many sets and, and coming in. And most people say that, that I've spoken to the cast over the years that Wentworth really is like a family. And, yeah, did you feel that from the, the get-go? Without a doubt. And can I tell you, I was crapping my dax about the whole thing. But you couldn't get a more sort of cohesive and collaborative and generous and inclusive bunch of actors mm -hmm. and um, I was really I felt immediately at ease uh, once we got the first sort of read through and everything out of the way but no I've never been into a cast that has been more that has been uh, any kinder than this one mm -hmm. really yeah and it's such heavy material as well and I know that when I speak to to, to you guys, you talk about the heavy material, but then everyone has to bring their A game. Everyone has to be super professional and get those scenes done because, you know, time is of the essence, but then you can be such a family together. And I guess that's because of the intensity. Would you, would you say that, Rudderoy, that that's correct? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, we, we play around a lot behind the scenes, lots of laughter, lots of jokes, lots of dancing. I mean, Robbie's always putting on a show for all of us and we're kind of pumping music. So we're kind of trying to keep it as light as possible behind the scenes, you know, because as soon as, you know, the director says action, it's we're in there shivering each other and people are dying and it's quite violent. <laughs> <laughs> And what about your first day on set a couple of seasons ago? If you remember back to that, what was it like for you? Um, it, like, typical Wentworth, it was, it consisted of like crying, a car crash, almost dying, some more crying. It was just a full on day with myself and Leah. I hadn't met anybody yet. No one, we were sort of at the beginning of like pre-production. So the cast haven't, hadn't arrived yet. So, and we'd already been filming for, I think about three days or something. And it was full on, but um, it was great. It was, I like, I was so nervous because then like four days later, we were meeting everybody and like, oh, hi. <laughs> I feel like there's no easing into Wentworth, is there? It sounds like from when I talk to people, it's like you hit the ground running and though, yeah, it's in, intense. Would you say so, Leah? Oh, yeah. Like just coming back the other day, I'm fighting three officers and it's the third day and your body's going, what, who am I? How do I do this again? And But that's the fun of it. You just hit the ground and you just go. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, from the very first day to coming back for the other seasons, we know the routine, we know what to expect, and it is, you're in, boots and all, and you just go, go, go. If, as, and as Radi said, if you're not shiving someone, fighting someone, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how does that leave you guys at the end of a filming day then? Like what do you do, just literally sit there and zone out or...? <laughs> I come home and go to bed and a hot cup of tea yeah. <laughs> and a hot shower and I go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Susie? What's your tonic at the end of a day? Um, I get the hot water bottle and put it into my bed um, and...
and um, probably F45. If I haven't done it in the morning, I'll go and do an F45, either in the morning or in the uh, afternoon. Mm. Get it out of your system. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Be there. <laughs> now, Kate, I wanted to ask you, for me, Vera is one of those characters that's had an incredible arc. I mean, we've seen her from beginning as a meek and mild kind of, you know, playing Pamela against Pamela Rabe and with the freak and then she you know she stood up for herself and she became stronger and now she's this strong um strong woman and I just wanted to ask you what that's been like playing that arc over eight seasons um well it's been a ride and um and it's it's been a, a joy I mean it's an exercise in uh surrendering yourself to the material that's on the page and when you start playing a character like Vera Bennett in season one, you have no idea that that's the trajectory she's going to go on. And um, and I think it's really liberating to play a character that is, um, she's not a hero, she's not a villain, she's, um, you know, her moral her moral compass is actually quite ambiguous and um, so there's a lot of scary storytelling opportunities. So I really leave it in the hand of the writers and um, and, I, and I think the joy is not shying away from the moments that are excruciating. Some of Vera's material is um, you read it and you go, why would anyone do that? And then you just have to embrace it and, and enjoy, you know, the um, complexity of that character. And I just should say along the lines of, um, you know, everyone else, you know, beating each other up and shivering and... Um, I haven't done a lot of that. I spent <laughs> seven years in, you know, internal torment. And I said to a friend the other day, I think, you know, it's quite easy for me to shake it off. You know, it's just all internal and I do the psychological work and da da, da. And I, But I might have an ulcer in years to come. I don't know. <laughs> I, but I, so when we did the siege at the end of season seven, I remember looking at my co, my co, um, my colleagues and going, oh, this is what you guys do every day. I had such respect for them and for the crew for enduring those terrible scenes. Um, so anyway, I thank the writers and I thank, you know, all my, um, you know, co-workers, for, you know, my scene partners, so to speak, because, yeah, it's been, it's been a real joy. Yeah. I mean, you spoke just then about the psychological for Vera and that probably leads me to my next question about, your scenes with Pamela Rabe and the freak. Like what would you say has been the most challenging one for you over the seasons or the one that you've enjoyed, if for want of a better word, most? Yeah, I think I think challenging it, it, it's that's not a good word because they're not challenging. If anyone's worked with Pamela Rabe, it's really bloody easy. Um, she just makes it very easy. Um, the most challenging thing is when we have to do something desperately serious and we're just trying not to laugh. Um, so that sounds glib, but, you know, we have so much fun. There's nothing more fun than an adversarial relationship like that. There's nothing more comic than someone of my stature and her stature appearing in a frame together. It's just ridiculous and we love it. But I must say one of my favourite scenes was... Um, the one where the freak had me over to dinner and she made a desperate attempt to actually say something intimate and meaningful to me. And these two desperately social awkward people awkward people trying to connect in some way. It was it was a lovely scene <laughs> to play. And where will we see Vera when we kick off um, in season eight? She's a mother now, obviously, and how has that changed her, do you think? Yes. Well, um, yeah, the two significant things that kick me off for season eight are obviously the presence of Grace, the baby, um, and also the introduction of um, Jane's character, Anne Reynolds, um, and also, I guess, um, Vera's mothering of Grace also intercepts her relationship with um, Jake and how they handle that. Um, 
Jane's going to laugh when I say this, but the baby who is playing Grace <laughs> is so freaking adorable. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> I was a little obsessed with her. But, look, I think I'm not a mother. Um, I think Vera, given her history, is a very trepidatious mother. She's prepared to do everything wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think perhaps, like most mothers, there's some things that come very easily for her and some things that are very difficult that she didn't anticipate um and then of course she's a woman who works in a prison so there's a whole other dimension that um that I can't identify with but um uh the writers have given me some fairly high drama to do with a you know a person having a baby in a prison yeah so um anyway she 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 brings a whole new level of enjoyment yeah, I mean the baby is one thing, and I, I absolutely love seeing Vera Vera's friend come into the fold with Anne Reynolds. So Jane, what was what's it been like working with Kate? And um, yeah, on set. Oh, listen, there's never a dull moment, and uh, and we too have a terrific amount of laughs, even though our uh, our the relationship between our our characters is incredibly complex. Um, we do, uh, Kate and I have fallen deeply in love with baby Grace uh, and, and I cannot say that, uh, I, I, ca- I cannot stress that more. She's all we think about, frankly. Um, <laughs> but, we are, but we are trying to, look, look listen, Kate's, Kate's like, Vera's the backbone of this series. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. I think she's like important part of the scaffolding that holds everything together. And so to be brought in um, into Vera's storylines and have the opportunity to, to kind of thrash all that out with Kate, that was, that was, that's really up there for me. That's just, it, that's been an in, incredible joy and a great privilege to Kate, I might say. Thanks, Likewise. <laughs> and we do see Vera let her hair down a bit on a night out with Anne, so that's good to see as well. Can you ladies talk about, about that? Oh, look, I think anyone who's had to do a dancing scene in a TV (laughs) show will tell you it's a bit shit. It is terrible. You get these these fragments of music that they can afford, which generally you can't can't dance to, and you have to make it look like you're having a really good time. We did. We looked after each other and we had a ball. But I, as anyone will tell you from the cast, I love dancing. I love it. I'll dance at the drop of a hat. But when you film a dancing scene and you've got, your, you know, dealing with extras and weird doof doof music, it's not good, is it, Jane? No, no. It's, it was really, really tricky. It's, it's, as, it's as difficult to do as a fight scene, you know. It's really full on. And, but, and, and the thing, the difficulty for Kate is Kate is a really, really good dancer. Vera should not be a good dancer. So we were just constantly kind of reining her in, you know, trying to get her to stop having so much fun. So it was just un <laughs> <laughs> and how hard is it to play drunk as well? I mean, do you guys have that down or is that... I find that incredibly easy. <laughs> <laughs> Got it up to Celia Island standard. Celia Island did some red hot drunk acting. Yeah. Not easy. No, it definitely isn't. And let's bring um, Bernie in and have a chat about obviously baby Grace and you're the, the father of, or Jake is the father of baby Grace. How's that been for, um, for Jake this season? We've seen a bit of a turnaround in him, I think. Oh, well, I think the only word for it would be redemption, I think, Erin. Um, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jake is, um, Jake is realising, obviously he's realised that becoming a father has, um, I think, made a few pretty wholesale changes in, in, um, in who he is and what, what his kind of um, responsibilities are and, and, um, and what his priorities are. So, yeah, he, um, it's, I think this, this season is, is all about him trying to do everything he can to prove to Vera that he is the, a capable father of grace. And, uh, again, like Kate, we, we've, we've both had some really great moments with uh, uh, the, the – there's been a few little girls that have been playing grace, but there's one particular one which has been um, – you know, it's really beautiful to work with. And um, you are always going to those scenes with the kind of, um, what is it, the WC Fields kind of thing, never work with animals and children. And you kind of, you know, it, it could always go a little awry, but uh, she's been terrific. And and so, yeah, you know, it's it's been a great um, journey for Jake. And I guess 
anyone will tell you that playing a villain is is always great fun and you know playing a kind of a loathsome character that people love to hate is is kind of delicious fun uh, but then also to play that sort of juxtaposition or that kind of transformation from someone who people love to hate to someone who um you know against everyone's you know kind of in in a um, being fiber of their being they they can't help but kind of feel some empathy for Jake and I know Kate was actually saying, she goes, I, ca- I can't even believe that I'm saying that, but I feel sorry for Jake mm. in certain time. And she's like, I can't, I know what he's done and I know what he's done to, to Vera and I still think, oh, Jake, isn't he? No, I can't say that. No. Mm-hmm. So um, it's been, been great fun. It's been, you know, it's been wonderful, wonderful to, to play that, um, you know, kind of <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde sort of, um, mm. you know, kind of character. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, I know that we can't give anything away about the, this new season, but I w- I'm with you, Kate. I was exactly the same when I watched the first four episodes and I was like, wow, this guy has redeemed himself. I am yeah. there going, come <laughs> on, just let him do this or let him do that. So, you know, um, yeah, kudos to the writers and to you guys because, yeah, I, I definitely was doing the same thing. And, Bernie, what's the ride been like for you over the, the seasons that you've been on Wentworth? Well, I mean, I, Aaron, I like to sort of say, I, you know, I, I, I have no problems in saying that I think that my experience on Wentworth has been the, the best professional experience of my life. Um, and, well, even the best personal experience, regardless of the professional stuff. Um, the people that I've had a chance to work with, Every single cast member is some, is an actor that's at the top of their game and you have no choice but to step up to that level and just become uh, a better person in the sphere of, of what's going on at Wentworth. And um, at, at every juncture there's, there's, some, there's learning to be done. Uh, the crew members and, and all of the crew and all of the um, you know, people in the production office and everyone attached to this show, and I think this is unique to this show or not, you know, or not, not necessarily unique to every show, but it's um, everybody's a fan of this show. The actors themselves are kind of we're all fans of the actual show, of the actual drama. So the the privilege of being able to work on this show and to be able to grow as an actor within the this kind of experience, um, you know, I just is, is just I will never take it for granted, and I'll, I'll always appreciate the experience that I've had to work with these you know incredible actors and incredible um, you know producers, directors, writers, everybody working on the crew. It's just been such a joy to work on, and and I think it's you know it's it's a it's a privilege to work on a show that I think will leave such a legacy mm. in in Australian television history. I mean, it, it carries on from the legacy that Prisoner um, started, of course, but, uh, and I think it creates its own and unique legacy and will be remembered for a long time as, um, you know, a really groundbreaking show in many ways, you know, obviously the, the, the for reasons that, it, you know, for, for roles for women, for strong roles, roles for women, for truly um, a truly diverse cast that isn't just, uh, you know, like so, say the Indigenous characters, they're not just uh, there because they're Indigenous, they're because they're, they're, beca- they're, because they're, they're characters and they're people, um, mm-hmm. first of all, rather than, you know, kind of um, token kind of characters. And, you know, uh, there's, a, there's, a diverse, there's a diversity through that whole cast. And so I, I'm, I really feel really proud to have been part of this show and, um, and I'll never forget it. Mm-hmm. And Bernie, to to go on from what you were saying about, you know, recognition around the world, I I have a little story from a few years ago and it was when Wentworth, I think it was two seasons in, my husband and I were going on our honeymoon. We were getting on this small plane in the middle of America and we were chatting about Wentworth because we'd just been at the Logies and a woman in front of me turned around and was like, oh, my God, I love that show. She was American. It's incredible. Um, yeah, and she, she was super, super excited. Uh, what, what have you guys had um, when you're travelling around? Where's been the strangest place that you've, you've run into a fan? And, and have you noticed that that recognition, it's not just in Australia anymore, it has broadened out to be worldwide now? Uh, well, I, when I, um, I, I have a, a sort of experience, when I finished my first season, season four, which is my first season, uh, the day that I finished shooting on that season, I actually, I, I had 
I booked another role, another another episode of this show called Once Upon a Time, which is this um, American show, ABC thing, but it was shot in Vancouver in Canada. And I flew straight from set, basically went out to the airport and went, flew up to uh, Vancouver. So I wasn't on air yet on Wentworth. Um, I had just finished my first season. But when I got to uh, Vancouver, all of these kind of, you know, cast and crew members on this big US show were saying, oh, you know, what have you been up to? And I said, oh, I've just come from this, doing this other show back in Australia called Wentworth. And they, in Canada, it's it's really huge and they, they just love it. And they were you know, all of the, the costume people and makeup people, oh, my God, I love that show. It's fantastic. And then they just they they just were gushing about the show. And and we, we've been also lucky enough to be part of some of these um, kind of uh, these sort of fan events that go on around the world. There's been ones in sort of Birmingham and London and I think there's been ones in America as well, in um, in Jersey and, and stuff. And to see the effect that the show has on people is um, is a really gratifying thing and, and you know, fans of this show are really deep, committed fans of the show. It's not if you like the show, you love the show, and um, and it's just it's great to be part of that for you know for part of people's experience in that way. Mm. And Susie, do you have any fan encounters that you? Um, I actually had a strange one when um, I was in a Sephora, you know, the makeup shop <laughs> in Santa Monica. And this fellow was um, helping me with some products and then he suddenly went, oh, my God, you're Mari Winter. And um, and then I got heaps of free samples. <laughs> <laughs> Use it, so, yeah. Girl. Use it. Yeah, so that was, um, yeah, he kind of was like doing my makeup and then he was like, oh, my God, are you? Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was probably, you know, outside of Australia, the, the kind of, coolest kind of yeah experience yeah and Rudderboy are you getting have you had any of that kind of experience look I I was in New York City a couple of years ago and they've got this awesome salon called Diva Curl and because you know you don't have a lot of salons in Australia that cater to your curls I was in there and I was getting my curls done it was amazing the best experience ever and then I was walking down the street in New York City and the thing is like people don't really recognize me if I have my hair up but if I have it out it's Ruby Mitchell then they do so I did have like a few cars follow me down the street <laughs> and I was a little bit scared <laughs> they were, you know those are big black American cars and I was like what's going on and they're like Randy Mitchell and I was like hey put my fist up ready I was gonna say <laughs> 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 no yeah that was the most um sort of crazy experience but yeah and Leah would you say um of all the roles that you've had that you get recognized the most for this or is there another role that you get recognized for yeah, no, Reed is the, the big one because I sort of, you know, have uh, little bits of TV here and there, but this has been the most constant. And for me, it's my voice that gives me away because I always go hats and hair up. No one knows me, you know, glasses, me tracksuit pants on and away I go. Um, so I was, in a, I was in a clothing shop and um, when I went in, there was hardly anyone around. So the girl with me, oh, can I try this size? You know, can I try that? So I'm just yelling out to her. And then when I finally, you know, found the coat that I liked and the jacket and I ripped the curtain back, there's a line of people. I said, I told you it was Rita Connors. Oh. <laughs> and I went, what? And she said, hear your voice. She said, I heard your voice. So she oh, told wow. the mates and they come in and there's a line up. So we had a bit of a chat and <laughs> get some fashion tips and away we <laughs> Love it. And, and Kate, being the, the longest serving cast member, have you, did you get recognised, do you think, from season one or did it take a little while to, for that to happen? Um, no, it's, look, it's been fairly consistent. Um, uh, you know, but mostly people are really polite and you know, mostly I think the weirdest thing is when people just stare at you. And I'm a bit the same as Leah. I, they tend to recognise my voice. I can go unseen for a bit. And then I don't know if this is an insult. Maybe I've got a really piercing voice. But at my, over my mouth, people seem to recognise me. But the weirdest one I had was actually in the London Tube where there's nowhere to go. You were underground mm. and some bloke called out, vinegar tits! Oh. And everyone, like, all these heads turned and I'm stuck on the underground. <laughs> well, how did you react to that? Did you kind of just put your head down or did you own it or how did you? 
Uh, I know I put my head down a little bit and kind of and most people just thought he was a nut there yes. was a few people that you know um responded but I like, yeah God, the London queue that was <laughs> now Rudder Boy I wanted to ask you where is Ruby at when we get to uh season eight of Wentworth where will we find her yeah okay so season eight um Ruby so Rita has left uh, so we left season end of season se- seven with Rita leaving. So Ruby's sort of on her own. I mean, she's with the um, Wentworth family, but her sister's gone and her father's really sick, dying of cancer. Um, yeah, so she's kind of going through a lot of... She's grieving yeah. at the beginning of season eight. Yeah. And how is it? I heard you say before, Leah, that you've knowed, known each other since you know, right away was six years old. So I guess was it easy then for you guys to play play sisters? Yeah, well, we've played um, mother and daughter. I've directed her. She slept at my place when she was 13 and doing naughty things. No. <laughs> 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 um, but it's, it's, it's great to, you know, to know, to see this little girl, six-year-old, playing in a park with mm-hmm. my daughter in Redfern in Sydney, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're rocking up three years ago to Wentworth to play sisters in the biggest, one of the biggest dramas in the world. Yeah. And we were pinching ourselves. And then, you know, she had a birthday not long ago. I'll leave your age calling up to yourself. But to see her grow from that little girl to a beautiful, mm. strong, determined, talented woman is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. And what's it like to share those scenes together, Rudderoy? <laughs> um, yeah, well, like what Leah was saying, you know, I've worked with Leah for many years, you know, as you know, as a director and me as the actor. I mean, we have um, done that. We have acted once before in your short film, yeah. Mother Daughter. So it's been really great to, you know, have this playground where we get to act like, um, I mean, you know, it's you, Leah. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're everything. Like, you're such a huge inspiration to many of us. You know, you're such a hard worker and I think that I feel so lucky and it's really easy to work with Leah. Like we just, we, we're one take wonders. We get things done very quickly. I know I'm talking us up, but you know, it's, we get in there, it's fun. We're very playful. You get it done and you know, yeah. We have a good time. We have a good time and a good laugh. I was going to say, is there a shorthand then between you guys? And I guess there would be amongst most of the cast with people that you you work with and share scenes with, probably the same for Kate and Bernie as well. Is that, would you say? Uh, Bernie? I was going to say something about an insert. (laughs) Very infantile humour, Bernie and I. That's what gets us through. Yes. Puerile. (laughs) <laughs> whenever we, whenever we, uh, the, the scenes that we shoot in the in the governor's office or sometimes in the staff room, usually because <laughs> there's usually a whole day with all of the scenes that are shot that that are in the the, the um, governor's office, generally tend to kind of um, you know devolve into the puerile towards the end of the day because we're all there, we're all in the same uh, uh, environment and. You know, it's uh, but it's all about making you know making it fun uh, on set. Yeah. And it's nice also when when you've got that shorthand or that like when Rady said, "Oh, it's so great to have you back because we've got this banter going." Mm. You know, when we've got the emotional scenes, we know we can turn around to one another and really give each other a hug, mm. not only as characters but then as actors, and we know and we feel safe. There's yeah. a safety in that, and and that allows us to be to go there because we know we, we're safe in the hands of the fellow actor that we've always got the intimate scenes with or there's some um, journey, you know, and connected in our life. And that's that's what makes Wentworth, um, you know, special as well. And, you know? and I think I think there's also, uh, the, I've always said that there's a, a very great, a great sense of generosity uh, amongst all of the actors. So we try to create a generous environment where, you know, you're able to kind of, you know, be vulnerable or be whatever you need to be to kind of to to get the crux of what the scene is all about. And everybody is helping you to kind of to scale that mountain. And then 
Uh, and then when we do, we, we can all have a bit of a laugh about it at the end and, and, uh, and just start dancing, you know, randomly. <laughs> and I, I think that extends to our crew as well. Like we have an incredibly loyal crew. Some of our crew have been with us for eight seasons. And uh, I think everyone uniformly on the cast has good camera craft. Like everyone knows technically what is needed to make the day go smoothly. So we're communicating with the crew as well to see what they need so that we can technically, you know, so it's a really well-rounded cast in that sense and that we're all looking after each other at a performance